And in this Duru interview segment, I'm going to introduce you guys to two of my mastermind students who I've taught the concept of what I like to call transaction engineering. Now, for some of you who may have never heard of this concept before, it's the art of taking any type of deal and creating a win-win scenario from that deal. So what do I mean by that? I mean that regardless if it's a wholesale deal, rehab deal, buy and hold deal, a uh, real estate agent type deal, owner structure finance deal, we could structure that deal and make money off of it. So make sure you stay to the end because this interview is going to be very, very enlightening on the concept of transaction engineering to the point of where they started from zero deals a year ago, and now they're on pace to do 24 to 27 deals this year alone. They've already done a total of nine deals in the last quarter. So stay tuned, make sure you watch the video completely so you'll understand the concept of what it means to be a transaction engineer. Hey everybody, this is Charles Blair, the mad scientist, and I'm with two of what I like to call my stellar mastermind students, Bruna and Felipe. Say hello to everybody, Bruna and Felipe. Hey guys. Hello. Now, for those of you who don't not don't know Bruna and Felipe, there are, are what I call transaction engineers. And this whole presentation that we're doing right now. This interview is all about the mindset of a transaction engineer. Now, what do I call a transaction engineer? A transaction engineer in my book is a person that can take any kind of deal and make something out of it or find a financial outcome where it's a win-win for all parties involved, regardless if it's wholesale, rehab, buy and hold, owner structured financing, uh, subject to, you name it, they can trans the action engineer that deal and make it into something. Bruno, do me a favor. Felipe, do me a favor. Introduce yourself to everybody and just let's get in the flow. All right. So my name is Felipe. Bruno is my wife. And we, I'm doing this full time since November, I think, right? Since November, I'm doing this full time. And Bruna is working her full time job as well, right? And yeah. she working extra hours after after nine to five. She was working with me. So the good well. thing is that you can you can have a full time job and do this business. Yeah, I, I, right now, you know, Charles. In the last thirty days, I was talking to Bruna, and our business structure has changed a lot in the last thirty days because I am a firm believer that I need to bring people and leverage other people time as well in this business, because this is key for growth, I think. And uh, I don't know, what do you think? Yeah, that's one of the things we learned. Uh, Felipe doesn't have capacity to do all the things. And so we need to scale and we need to delegate right. things. And that's, that's I think, uh, the key for the success that we have been seeing with us. Well, whether one of you guys are working full time or both of you working full time, however the structure is, is the key is you can multiply your efforts because it's two of you not to mention you can play off of your strengths somebody may be strong at negotiating somebody may be strong at working with the contractors somebody may be strong with cold calling you can multiply your successes that way yeah that's true for example i i don't like to do cold calls Bruna either. So we hire VAs to do this, this task for us, you know, and as I said, we leverage other people time and we, we spend, I spend my time doing what I like most, which is going on appointments, checking the properties, running right. homes, go out with the contractor and Bruna, she's doing an amazing job with the KPIs as well and oversees everything. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I agree with you guys 100% because that's the key. When you have a business, it's all about maximizing the amount of time that you have. Everybody has 24 hours, but everybody doesn't use that same 24 hours the right way. And when it's two of you, you could easily translate that to a winning formula. Tell people, what do your business look like? 
how many people are involved in it, and so on. So right now, uh, Philippe is pretty much leading uh, all the transactions and everything. And we have three VAs. We have two VAs doing cold calls. We have mm -hmm. one VA that I really call this VA the ad hoc VA because I ask him <laughs> random things. So sometimes I ask, he has daily activities, but I also add some activities when we want to try a new strategy. He's not really the person I go to. Got you. So three VAs and you guys all together. Uh, are you guys in multiple markets or are you just doing it here in Maryland? We are, our focus is Maryland because we are here and we understand the market. But we have expanded a few weeks ago to Tennessee as well. So we are excited to see what's going to come from there. So you're, you're in one market for sure. And then you're going to also expand to Tennessee. What does the last 9, 10, 12 months look like in your business? Because we talk about being a transaction engineer. So that must mean deals, doing some deals. What do that last 10, 12 months look like? I'll take it here on uh, self. Um, we had, right now we have around six to seven properties, either that we close it or that we are under contract. Some mm -hmm. of them were doing fix and flip, some of them were going to wholesale. And last year, in January, we closed, I think, two properties. Yeah. And last year, between December and November, we had the true properties as well. Yeah. I want you guys to go a little bit more specific. Let's think in terms of the transaction engineer. We did X amount of wholesale, X amount of buy and hold, X amount of owner finance. Let us know, give us some details on these deals. So we did two wholesales. One wholesale okay. was closed in January. The other wholesale okay. is under contract. And last year we closed a wholesale that upon their contract for one dollar. That's true. That it turns to be a listing. That's true. That's the, the power option of, to buy. <laughs> that's the power so that, of the transaction engineer. We didn't know exactly how to do and how to find a buyer. And then Felipe was able to connect with trust, to connect with another agent, and we found a buyer. So that was actually our first our first deal. Tell us about that deal and the structure of it. Yeah, this deal was uh, that triplex that you that you that you you made a video. I put under contract mm -hmm. for one dollar initially, and you know I was say I'm gonna find you a buyer, and here's one dollar. Let's sign the paper. And uh, I think it was uh, Corey. He found a buyer, but the buyer was had a FHA loan, was not a cash buyer. So I came back to the seller and say, hey, we can still can get a, the same amount of money that you need. But I need to to make a listing agreement with you. So I had to a listing agreement, and I already have a buyer. And basically, our, our my wholesale fee or my commission was the same thing, and the buyer was receiving the same thing at the end of the day as well. So this was the first one. I really, you know, was prospecting, and this was for sale by owner deal. And now, nice. the good the part about it was it was only a dollar that you put down on the property. Yeah. That's true. And that what kind of return, what kind of profit was that made on that first deal? I made eight grand and I think Corey made eight, eight grand as well, if I'm not mistaken. So basically it was a $16,000 profit that you split and that's just yeah. off of a dollar investment. Now, yeah. that was a for sale by owner deal. Yes. So it went from taking the property from a regular wholesale to you guys actually getting your actual fee as the listing agents exactly yeah that's the the that's a plus for me because i'm a realtor so i can do that kind of stuff you know when, when it's Necessary. when it's suitable yeah. yeah now here's the question people probably asking well why didn't you guys just wholesale it why did you take it from a wholesale to a listing where you got your wholesale fee as a, as the listing agreement because uh, the buyer was there. I mean, I had a relationship with Corey. I knew Corey. Uh, Corey said, my buyer will, will close on this one. So why, you know, I said, yeah, let's close it. I mean. And the best part about it is the buyer was using what kind of funding with it? Was it 
FHA? Was it hard money? What was it? What were they using? Yeah, it was an FHA loan. That's that's the that's the message that I wanted to hear. That's why it went from an exactly. actual wholesale to the FHA loan um, buyer to a listing because the buyer was a traditional FHA buyer. That's exactly. the reason why it went in that direction. And yes. once again, that's why we call being a transaction engineer is somebody that can change a situation up and still make it a profitable situation. And that was a three unit. So yes. the buyer got a great deal. You guys transitioned from wholesaling to listing and basically the same wholesale fee you was going to get. You just made it as a listing agreement fee. Yes. Yeah. I think the, the key when you are a transaction engineer is that you need to understand what is the motivation of the, the seller. Maybe the seller was just not really in the mood to, to have a contact with other realtors, or maybe he didn't want to, have to shoot the property. So right. I think that's one of the things right, that we are learning. What is the real motivation of the seller? Why does he or she wants to sell the property? And also, after you know the motivation and after you know the numbers, then you can have an idea and ask us, what is the best solution that I can offer, right, for the seller? And that's one of the things that we have been shifting our mindset to, to this way as well. Yeah. yeah. People have to understand for the seller, it isn't necessarily the price is the most important thing. A lot of times for the seller, solving the problem is the most important thing. And that investor or that party that can solve that problem while at the same time build a rapport with the seller, nine times out of 10, they're gonna be ones that get the deal done. Mm -hmm. We have another example as well. And this one was from January. Okay, um, let's talk about it. Tell me about it. Yeah, this is the property that initially Philippe ran the comps and he saw that the price that the seller was asking was very close to the ARV. Mm -hmm. And he figured that also the owner had a large mortgage. Yeah, the owner was upside down his mortgage. So basically, uh, he had a, a spread on the, you know, on the retail price, but he was getting 1200 per month in rent and his okay. mortgage payment was like 1600 per month. He so he was money. losing money every month. You ain't kidding. That's that's a, that's a four hundred dollar deficit. Yes, and I stopped by. The tenant was there. I walked through the property. The property was good. I mean, everything was working. Everything was nice and clean. You know, no repairs to do. And I said, "Hey, I can offer that amount of money." But he said, "Oh, this is my mortgage is X, so I can't sell for that amount." And I said the same thing. I said, "Hey, maybe." I, I'm positive I can find a buyer. If he listed on the market for X amount of dollars, I can find a buyer. And he agreed. So I made a listing. And it was funny because a week before, I went to a hard money lender event and I networked with a lot of investors. And one of those investors that I networked with, he said, hey, I want to buy this property. And I blessed, I blessed this property for some buyers, you know, some VIP buyers that I have a VIP buyers list. And the right. buyer said, yes, I want to buy it. And I don't have an agent. You can write the offer for me. So I write the offer and I, I get in a double dip in the commission. <laughs> the buyer has no realtor. So I wrote the offer and I made clear that I'm representing the seller only. And I'll get the 5% commission. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So those are two examples where you initially put on your investor hat but then you turned it around to the realtor hat. Yes. I've got to ask you on that deal. What's going to be the projected profit on that one? My commission is going to be around 7,500. Excellent. Excellent. Not bad for uh, and what uh, type of deal was that? How did you find that one? This one was a uh, tire landlord, if I'm not mistaken. Ah, tired landlord and the tool prop stream. Yeah, prop string, skip trace, and cold call. Got it, got it. So those are two examples of winning as an investor came out as a listing. Give us some examples of winning as an investor stayed as an investor to close the deal. 
or to get it under contract? Yeah. We have won the, the property that we end up not wholesaling because it was in a location in Canton that we really like. We decided to buy and hold. This property, I remember very well, initially on the phone, the seller was asking 365. Okay. When we went on the property, it dropped it to 345. So when right away from 365 going to the property to 345. Yes. Okay. Then we called him on the next day, he went to 325. Then we educated him on the EVs because the property was not in good conditions. Uh, we showed comps, we showed everything, and then we closed it for 290. 280. 280. 280. 280. So it, went from 360, it went from 365 to 280. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you said something very important. When you went to that property, you had some facts with you. How yes. important was it to have that information with you so that you could show that seller to justify you getting a bigger discount? I think that was the key because when he saw when he saw what he was selling for the same square footage, same, same number price. of bedrooms, same price, he understood that we the, the offer that we gave him was not something that it was just just a number, a random number. It was based on something. The something was the comps as is. And I think looking at this, he was a little bit more comfortable. Got it. So now you're in, you got it under contract already? Yeah, we closed it last year. This so was the owner finance deal. Okay, so you closed it. And let's talk about the 285. How did you own a structured finance that one? So when we got this property, we called a person called Charles. <laughs> <laughs> and we said, Charles, this property, we're thinking about this. What do you think? And then you mentioned, maybe we can offer this amount or that amount. And then I remember I had in my mind as well to offer 10000 as down payment. But at the same time, I wasn't really confident that we could offer this because who would accept for 10000 That was my old mindset. Uh, and then you also mentioned the monthly payments, which I was Charles. <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen with this guy. <laughs> but I said, well, I don't have anything to lose. Let's say. And then we offered him and then they end up accepting the, the offer. Yeah. Okay. Let's, let's talk. That, that was a lot. So let's talk over that. The one thing that I like to bring attention was the fact that Bruna had no problem mentioning she was interjecting the offer that she would accept. Nah, I don't think he's going to take that. I wouldn't take that. So I don't think he's going to take that. But I said, okay, it's not about what you would do. It's about the offer that makes sense for the deal. And if you don't present it, you don't know if you're going to get the deal. Who was? I think it was Michael Jordan who said, you miss every shot you don't take. So had you not offered it, had you put in or kept in your mindset, I don't think he's going to take that. The numbers, the deal may not have happened. So break down the numbers of the deal. What was the down payment? What was the monthly payment? And what's the, what is the projected profit? Sure. So basically we purchase price was, I don't I don't two know. Two nine, yeah, that's true. It was two ninety the purchase price? We okay, you got it for two ninety. Two ninety, ten grand as a down payment. You put ten thousand dollars down, okay? Yeah. So we have a two eighty k balance. And okay. We're gonna pay this balance in a hundred twenty monthly payments of a thousand dollars. Okay. Thousand so dollars a month. A month for ten years, no interest, and after the the payment a hundred. Uh, after the uh, 10 years of payment, we're going to do a balloon payment of 160 grand. So you're talking about $10,000 down, 120, $1,000 a year for 10 years, a balloon yes. payment, you said of 160? Yes, correct. And how much cash flow per month are you looking at or are you getting on this $1,000 a month that you're giving him? Yes. So this is a two unit building. 
and one unit is rented for fourteen ninety five, and okay. the other one we are about to sign a lease for twelve hundred. So, so basically, so basically, the one unit for fourteen ninety five pays the thousand dollars that you're giving them. Yep. With another four hundred. 450 left over and then the second unit of 1200 that you have attended for that's already open the already set he's giving you 1200 so you're you're like what 1600 cash flow yeah it's about yeah that's about right 1600 and then after you take out your expenses after you take out taxes and stuff what are you at it's about a thousand dollars profit per month and it's five hundred dollars per door. Oh, that is gorgeous. Five hundred dollars positive cash flow, net cash flow per door on a door on a deal that you own a structured finance with ten thousand yeah. dollars down and a thousand dollars a month. Now, give them a little sense of how did you find that deal? This was a drive for dollars. Yeah, this one was a drive for dollars deal. <laughs> so you can find deals. So you can find deals driving for dollars. Yeah, and really worth it. If I can do one of these per year, driving the entire year, I'm gonna drive the entire year for that deal again. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so you've gotten deals from driving for dollars. You've gotten deals from um, switching your investor hat to a realtor hat. Have you gotten any buy and holds, other buy and holds or rehabs that you're doing? Anything like that? There's the, the, the property yeah. we are flipping. Yeah, so right now we're doing a lot of flips because we okay. have partners that they come in. I, I bring the deal, they bring the money, and we're doing flips. And wholesale as well. We we just finished it, Denison. Uh, you, mm -hmm. you have a deal in that property as well, 200. We... We put under a contract for sixty-four grand. Uh, rehab was about forty thousand, and all in with closing costs is about one twelve, one fifteen. And okay. we're, gonna, we're gonna sell for we are under contract for two hundred eight and eight thousand. All in at one twelve. That includes repair costs, right? Yeah, in one twelve, and right. the selling price we we put a we put on MLS for one nine 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 hundred. We got under contract for two hundred and eight thousand. So pretty much, you got almost ten thousand above asking. Yes. And that's another. That's one that you rehab and sold, and that's like a seventy-five, eighty thousand dollar payday. Yeah. You got one. If I'm not mistaken, don't you guys have another one in Canton that you're you're popping up and popping out? You're yeah, building up Federal Hill. Federal Hill. Got it. Overview, yeah. We're doing a pop out and pop up, and we're just waiting. We we started the demo, the basic demo, and we're just mm -hmm. waiting for the site plan to be approved to do the additions. So we're just waiting right now. And so this, this this one was MLS deal. So you got MLS, you got yeah. driving for dollars, you got uh tired landlord prop stream. The one where we just got finished talking about Denison. Where did that one come from? Tire Landlord, I think, right? Yeah, I can't remember exactly, yeah. but I, I know it came from PropStream. And okay. actually, yeah, was was not the lead. The lead that we called didn't have any properties and he asked him questions. Do you know someone that need, is, right. is in need to sell property? And he, this lead gave us this guy phone number. And one property is, is Denison that we just flipped it. And we wholesale another property that we made uh, nineteen thousand dollars wholesale fee. Man, you guys had a busy year. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so tell me a bit about the the process in your business because you mentioned something earlier. All this success, it can't just be do it, do it, do it. You guys had to break down the business to where you have tools you have systems you have numbers let's talk about that part of your business what do your tools and systems look like yeah when we started the business we always talk to each other about not focus on the first deal which is hard i know we always want the first deal 
but to focus on a system. Because if you have a good system and if you have people on your team that you can trust and that do a good job, it's just a matter of time for you to get the first, second, and third deal. Right. Uh, so we use uh, we use PropStream, uh, we use Mojo, we use different systems to to be able to have a system and always to close on deals and always have uh, our KPIs, our metrics, and control everything. Because as Charles was saying uh, to us, it's it's really a um, numbers business. So it's important for you to know how many calls you are doing, how many offers you are doing, uh, how many appointments you are doing, and to really understand because the fact that maybe you are not closing deals is because there is a gap between one and the other. Maybe there is something that you need to adjust here, adjust there. Yeah. And if you have these numbers to understand, maybe that's where you, you need to go. It's like a doctor, right? When you go to a doctor, the doctor asks you a lot of questions so that the doctor knows where the issue is going. It's the same time with a business. You need to know uh, where you need to adjust a little bit here and a little bit there. So what you're saying is that it's not just closing. It's not just deals. It's the process that's in place to get you to the finish line. Yes. That's what's going to allow you to have longevity. That's going to allow you to scale your business to the level that you guys are obviously heading towards. Now, I love the fact that you guys are using some of these tools and systems, and I'm going to push you into giving these people some names of these tools. Yeah, I know you're using PropStream. Yeah. For your for one of the tools that you're using for uh, list building and lead generation. Yes. What are you using for your CRM? Oh, using Polio. This was a game changer for us because we didn't have any CRM and the money is in the follow up. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So you're using Polio as your contact relationship management system. What are you doing? What tool are you using for cold calling? We're using call tools for cold calling. So call. you're using call tools for cold calling. What tool are you using for skip tracing? Uh, we use Mojo and we use uh, Hassan as well. It's the same guy that you that you that you Rick. you know recommended on your meetups. Okay, so you got Mojo that you're using, skip tracing, and you're also using uh, 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 Hassan, a, another guy that actually pulls skip tracing for you. Um, driving for dollars, are you using any tools for that, or are you just going raw at it, just driving? Yeah, we we using PropStream just to you know uh, put a pin right. in all the properties, and pretty much we every week we say, hey, let's drive on this zip code right now. Let's drive on this zip code next week. And that's how we do. Okay. And you mentioned direct mail. What are you using for direct mail? Yeah, for direct mail, we I I use it that print genie in the beginning. Okay. But uh, I, I was not really consistent on that. And I was okay. just any uh, like real mailers that I print on my on my <laughs> On my okay. printer, and I do like uh, handwritten, handwritten like uh, mailers. So you're basically using the handwritten system to do it yourself with, with your own printer. Um, are you using a? Are you you're handwriting the letters yourself, or are you using a handwritten font? Uh, I handwrite one letter, and I mm -hmm. print on my on my ink printer that it looks like the same. <laughs> excellent, excellent, excellent. So. Another thing that you mentioned is KPI. Tell people what is KPI and what does that look like in your business? Sure. The KPI is pretty much the metrics for the business. Uh, for us, in terms of calls, we do an average of 12,000 12, calls per week. Uh, out of this number, our agent normally connects with 600. And normally we have an average of six to eight people that say, yes, I want to sell my property. Per week. And that can be per anywhere week. from 10 to 15 percent people that you close. Yes. One or two persons uh, a month or every other month based on your actual marketing for that month. Yes. So KPI, 
key performance indicators. Guys, you heard it. These are the metrics that you want to know because to have your KPI is to know what's working, what, what actual list is working, what actual tools are doing what, and how the actual team is performing. Because if you notice, Bruna mentioned 12,000 calls per week. She wouldn't know that if she didn't have her KPI, which gave her a baseline of how many calls supposed to be called in any given week. So if that baseline jumps from 12,000 to 5,000, you know something is wrong. Something has, 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 has chinked up the system. Something has called a problem. Well, you know if the leads go from six leads to two leads, well, maybe that list isn't as good as we thought it was. Maybe something is going on with the list or maybe something's going on with the VA that's doing the work. That's why it's so important to know what that cost per lead with the key performance indicators is, 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 is in your business. And you should have that in your business. Do you guys have some kind of, of daily breakdown of who's doing what and when they should be doing it in your business, like a calendar or something? We use an app called Asana. I know Asana. Mm -hmm. It normally tells the tests that each one has to do. So I'm responsible to see if Philippe is doing what he <laughs> needs to do, if the VAs are doing what they are doing, and if everything, if everyone is doing what they are supposed to do. And it's very specific, the test. They know exactly what to do. It's in Asana. And it has the, the person that is assigned and the due date. <laughs> Yeah, and there's recurring tasks as well. For example, let's say list pool is every Monday, and every Monday you're going to have this task, or I don't know, follow up is a recurring task that I do every day, Monday to Friday, follow up in, in every day in the morning, and so on and so on. Got it. So tell people, what does the future look like? for 201 properties, where you guys are going at and how do you think your business is going to scale from where it is or where it has come from last year till the next 12 months? Yeah, so go for it. We, so every, every year we have our goals. Every week we talk about our goals and every quarter we do a summary to see what happened and if we're getting closer to, to the things that we want. So last year we said that we wanted to do 12 fix and flips for 2022 and we wanted to do six wholesales in the entire year. Mm -hmm. Turns out, I don't know exactly your thoughts, but turns out that just for the first quarter we already had six or seven yeah. properties under contract. We have, we have nine properties under contract for fix and flips. We have two, two, one wholesale deal was closed and the other wholesale deal is closing next month. Yeah. And we really focusing, try to switch gears to do more wholesales right now as well. So we figure, still figuring out how we're going to do it and everything, but yeah. And that's the important to know the KPIs and to daily review everything because, you know, maybe you can do 20 uh flips this year instead of 12 or you know we can and we notice our wholesale deals we're not getting a good traction so we need to change something to get more wholesale deals you know to get to our 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 to goal oh yeah and yeah that's it <laughs> man uh, fantastic man it's been a journey work it's been a, gr a great journey working with you guys both what advice would you give somebody who is new in the business and just, just want to want to be able to get some deals done? What kind of advice would you give those people? Yeah, for me, it's really consistency. But once you do this every day for four months, five months, six months, you're going to see some results. If you know your KPIs, if you know what you're doing, if you're consistent, there's no, if, there's no way you're not getting any deals, you know? So you need to put those hours in because people see us on the social media or they see us things like easy. Oh, they have a property every month or two properties every month, but it's not easy at all. You need to put those hours in, you need to figure out your assistance and there's a lot of work to do. That's the truth. Yeah. So with that being said, it's all about consistency. It's all about being, working a plan that 
makes sense. It's all about doing all of those things in order to get you to where you want to be. Yeah. Yes, I think also you need to have a good mindset. You need to work your head because it's very easy for you to today to be on a call and to be very excited on the next day you wake up and you are just not so excited. But if you know your motivation and if you know why you want to do what you want to do, that's a game changer. Hey, thank you guys. I couldn't say it any better. This is what I call being a transaction engineer taking that business to that level where there's no such thing as a bad deal. I appreciate you guys being on this call right now, taking time to, from your busy schedule. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How can people reach out to you if they want to work with you? They want to do some business with you. What's the best way they can reach out to you? Yeah, they can reach out to, to me on my Instagram. I always reply direct messages on my Instagram. And basically, that's it, right? What's your Instagram? Yeah, my Instagram is Felipe Stefanoni, my name and my last name. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you, Felipe and Bruna. You guys have a fantastic day. And uh, I'm waiting for, can't wait to hear from your next calls. Yeah. Thanks, Charles. I appreciate your support as well. No problem at all. Bye bye. See ya.